Have you got anything to give God thanks for? Amen. Have you really got things to give God thanks for this morning? We're going to sing about 10,000 reasons. 10,000 reasons and beyond. I'm sure if we really think about the goodness of God and what he's done for us, we can keep going. The fact that he's given us breath in our lungs, that we are here, we can see, we can talk, we can feel, we can touch. Amen. And that's just scraping, that's just the basics. Basics, basics. When we get into the real core of things, we've got so much to give God thanks for. So we're going to bless the Lord, oh my soul, this morning. And we're going to talk about his wonderful reasons for blessing us and giving us breath in our lungs. Amen, amen. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And 
Let's continue to keep worshiping God this morning. As I welcome Bishop E. George Beeson to the podium this morning. He's going to be delivering the word this morning and we give God thanks for him. Bishop Beeson, we welcome you this morning. Congregation, Bishop E. George Beeson. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We give God thanks. Thank you, worship the musician. God bless you. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, one amen. We thank the Lord. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. Yes, praise, um, praise the Lord. The Lord who knows our hearts this morning. We're glad to be here. Now, can I get a few people who are glad to be here to say amen this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's great to be in the house of the Lord and this morning. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's just great to be in his house. Amen. But I ask you please to let me greet pastoral team, Reverend Babs, greet you, pastoral team members, friends, greet you all in the beautiful name of Jesus. Amen. It's such a privilege to be in his house again, Amen. as I said before. So this is my third time, but I mean it from the bottom of my heart. I'm glad to be here. Yes. Praise God. I'd like to read a passage of scripture. Um, Hebrews chapter 4. It was read before, but I'm just going to read a couple of the verses. Hallelujah. Let us therefore fear. Lest the promise being left us of entering into his rest. And any of you should come seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. As I have sworn in my wrath, that they shall enter into my rest, although the work was finished from the foundation of the world. I'd like to use as a topic this morning the consequence of being lost. The consequence of being lost. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father, in this moment, as we come into your presence, standing before your people on this holy podium, Lord, we want to thank you for salvation that you have given to us. When we read your words, that we should fear as the promise being left us of entering into the rest. In the bit that follows, for unto us was the gospel preached, yes. as well as unto them. The word preached did not profit them. Lord, the seriousness of this this morning, let it come to our hearts. Let it strike at the bottom of our hearts. Father, remind us of such danger that we run the race and lay aside every sin that beset us. We give you the praise, we give you the glory. As we preach, I preach your word, let the word take a grip. Let it first grip at my heart before it can grip the hearts of the others that listen. We thank you for those that are in this audience right now, and those that will listen on Facebook, those that will listen on YouTube. Lord, I pray. Father, we repent, and I repent before you. For the way we have been preaching your word, 
We made you as a paper God. So full of grace. That you have no judgment. Lord we repent before you. I repent before you. As we come this moment. I pray for a special anointing. That you give your servant unction to function. The boldness to preach your word. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I wrote a song um, about three, four years ago. It's called The Preacher Man Chant. I'm not going to sing it this morning, but Brother Jim is going to play. You play it for me, please, Brother Jim.
Tuesday. Whilst we were there talking, it just happened that we were talking about Spurgeon and the sermon that he preached, men without eyes and heart and ears. The lady I was speaking to asked me to repeat it and I told her I did not know the topic of the sermon but I remember reading it and the impact it had on me. And I, for some reason, I just can't remember why we went on to the discussion. But I spoke, put a little volume on this one, please. For the gym, put a little volume on this one, please. Praise God. And for some reason, the conversation went on to Jonathan Edwards. And I mentioned to him the sermon Jonathan Edwards preached, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God. And immediately she went in her phone and tried to find it. And I did not know that that sermon was live on YouTube. But I remember in 1986 I was in Chicago, Illinois. And I went to Billy Grimes Museum. In that museum, I saw a writing from a reporter who was present at the service when that sermon was preached. And he said that the impact of the sermon caused men and women to grab onto their chairs on the post and the altar because they felt they were going to hell. They wept. And he said the weeping that they heard was similar to that you'd hear on a battlefield. Only that it was not the sword of a man or gunshot or spear lacerating and tearing through a heart. It was the word of God. And she found it and I said, listen, send it to me. And about 2.30 in the morning, I got up and I went to bed early and I listened to that sermon. As I listened, I wept before God. I said, God, I'm sorry for the way we have preached your word. We concentrate on having a large crowd in the congregation rather than preparing people to be ready to meet God. And after I prayed and I confessed before God, and I got up the six o'clock for a six o'clock session. Whilst we were praying, the Lord gave me the sermon that I had preached at the funeral service on Friday, and I wrote it down as He gave it to me. Time wouldn't have allowed it, but I preached what I could. But for this morning, the top, the text that we have, the word said, let us therefore fear. And the reason why we should fear the possibility of the promise being left us. It went on to say that unto us that was the gospel preached as well as unto them. I find that these days we just pray and we do what we want, we live how we want, and we don't hear a monkey if we are lost because we don't get ready and prepare ourselves for the rapture. I remember the days when I became a Christian, before I became a Christian. I used to cry sometimes, I did bad, but I used to weep. Many a times coming from work. And I said, God, please don't let me die the way I live. And there were times I remember, it happened more than once, I'll be coming from work. And all of a sudden, a Bible lead would appear on the road before me. And I couldn't pass without picking it up. And I couldn't understand if my head was playing trick on me or God was messing me up. But I realized the danger of being lost. 
And in this section, praise God, hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 3, Paul warned the believers, hallelujah. He warned, glory to God, hallelujah. He said in verse 7, wherefore as the Holy Ghost said, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. As of the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your father has tempted me, proved me, and saw my works 40 years. He said, I was grieved with that generation. And said, they do always hear. They do always hear in their heart. For they have not known my ways. And God who brought them out of Egypt said, I swore in my wrath. They shall not enter into my rest. And Paul then went on to warn the church. Take heed, brethren, lest there be an evil of lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in the parting from the living God. Believers, I submit to you that it's time we examine ourselves to see whether or not we are in the faith. Whether we be pastors, laity, whether we be worship leaders, musicians, whatever we are, we need to examine ourselves. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. The writer pointed out the danger of drifting from the word because of neglect. In this he explained the danger of doubting and disbelieving the word because of the hardness of heart. It is important then for us to understand the background in which he wrote, Let us therefore fear, lest the promise be left us of entering into the rest. We must understand that there are spiritual lessons in the geography of Israel's experience. The nation's bondage in Egypt is an illustration of sinners' bondage in this world. And just as Israel was delivered from Egypt by the blood of lambs and the power of God, so we as believers have been delivered from the bondage of sin. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. Oh, praise God. As it was in Israel's case, so it is in the church. Amen. We must fear lest the promise be left us. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, somebody. It wasn't God's intention to bring 3.5 million people out of Israel, out of Egypt, and allow them to remain in the wilderness. His desire was for them to enter the glorious inheritance in the land of Canaan. But when Israel got to the border of their inheritance, they delay because they doubted the promise of God. We are not able to go. They wept. The ten spies and the paper, hallelujah, wept, glory to God, wept because of the chance. We ourselves were at the borders of stepping over. Hallelujah. Caleb and Joshua and Moses were saying, God will help us. What? We learn from this is that we have lost the fear of God. We have lost the fear of God. We can sin and come to the house of God. We can preach, we can lead worship, we can play music, and we have no fear of God within us. And that's a dangerous position for us to be in. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. You see, Israel had come out of Egypt. They were in the wilderness, but they were not yet in their promise. They were not in the rest. And Paul used the scripture. When you think of us, many of us come 
to the house of God. We don't even bring our Bibles. We don't pray. We don't listen to the word of God. We do everything. We hear messages from people. Take messages from people on our phone, on our walkman, on our talkman, on our iPad, on all of these things. And we have never heard what God is saying. Believers, Billy Graham once said, if God doesn't judge America, he has to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. If God don't judge America and the Western world and the world, he must apologize to Solomon tomorrow. Hallelujah. 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 The scripture said we should take heed. Take heed to what? We must learn from the sad history of Israel and the important lesson he teaches us. Believers, there are many Christians who have malice in their hearts. There are many Christians who have rebellious in their rebelliousness in their heart, rebellion in their heart. There are many Christians who are not right with God and they do not repent. But when John the Baptist preached his sermon in the wilderness from advance, hallelujah, and he saw the people coming for baptism, he said, Oh, generation of vipers. What more you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth fruit, which is meat for repentance. If you're going to follow Jesus, you must have repentant fruit. Glory to God. The sad history of the nation of Israel it teaches us a lesson. In Psalms 95, 7 to 11, praise be to God. It records God's promise to Israel. And the tragic spiritual condition of that nation. God delivered them from Egypt and cared for them, revealing his power in many with many signs and wonders. Many of us have been blessed. We have seen how God has delivered us. We have seen how God has been good to us. We have seen how God has provided for us. And yet at the same time, we despise his grace, we despise his mercy, we rebel against him. Come on, we do our thing, but we forget about the God who brings us. Let me tell you something. The Bible said, let us fear for fear, lest the promise be left us for unto us. Was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them. In other words, they go to church. They hear the word of God, but they did not hear God's voice. Amen. They harden their hearts against God. Amen. Their heart, the heart of their problem was a problem of their heart. The people of Israel, except Moses, Caleb, and Joshua, heard in their hearts. Hebrews 3, verse 10. That's what it says. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise God. I was grieved with that generation. Can you imagine when God is grieved with you, Jay? Can you imagine when God is grieved with me, Pastor? Can you imagine when God is grieved with us? Hebrews 10, 31, it says, hallelujah, Hebrews 10, 31, this is what it said. It's hallelujah, glory to God. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a hungry God. Believers, my brother, God is not a laughing, laughing. God, he's a God of righteousness. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's a God of justice. God hates him. Charles Spurgeon once wrote, he said, just as a speck of sand, a bridge of sand in your eyes, and how it affects you and it grieves you and it hurts you, so does sin affects God. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Amen. amen. I have to say amen myself. Yeah, hallelujah. Romans 6, 23. Hallelujah. He said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Romans 6, verse 1. Hallelujah. He said, shall we, what shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin, sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Most 
of us here to preach the word of God. They said, shall we say, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He said, God forbid. How shall we continue in sin? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Live any longer therein. Amen. 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 Notice what God said in Hebrews 3.12. The people had an evil heart of unbelief. The Bible said they tempted God. They tempted God. Hallelujah. They, verse 9 said they, they tempted God. They proved that they saw his works. Forty years they saw it. Forty years they saw God's work. They saw everything that God was doing with Red Bounds. For forty years God blessed them. They saw the nations play, the nations tremble, nations covered over, walls came down. People run left their land. God said, I will give you land. Hallelujah. For 40 years in the wilderness, they were there marching. And God wanted them to go over. But they would not go over because of sin. And every, mo every morning, they rise. Hallelujah. Hope they are prepared for, to bury millions of them in the evening. Hallelujah. say their feet shall slide now. He said their feet shall slide in due time. They are not falling in. If they be not falling is not a sign that God doesn't know about their behavior. But because their time of destruction was not yet come. And hear what it says. Deuteronomy 32. Praise God. Hallelujah. Verse 35. God said, to me belongs vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them, hallelujah, the things that shall come upon them, make haste. Stay there, brother John. Hallelujah. Where are we spiritually? I know where I am spiritually. When you are slipping, you know it. When you are sliding, you know it. Hallelujah. When your prayer life gone bad, you know it. When your Bible reading and prayer and fasting gone bad, you know it. You see it. Gray hairs come up on our head without people, without we knowing it, others seeing it. 
Amen. 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 It's not a good thing when Christians walk in rebellion. You come to church and you hear God's word preach and you have not, you don't care a damn whether or not you're lost or not. And that's not cussing. Glory to God. My goodness, we're cussing a damn who's worse than God. It's not as good as God's cussing and cursing his people. Hallelujah. That's why God pronounced blessing upon his people. He said, whosoever curse you, I curse them. And whosoever bless you, I bless them. Because blessings mean the absence of curse. And when Jesus cursed the fig tree, brother Damien, when Jesus cursed the fig tree, the fig tree died at that moment. Hallelujah. It died the very heart. The curse was pronounced on it. Jesus is saying to the church, God is saying to his church, get ready. To me belongs vengeance and recompense. He said, dear feet shall slide in due time. For the day of their calamity is at hand. The things that shall come upon them make haste. Number one, I want us to look at a few things in that verse. Number one, they were always exposed to destruction as one stands or walk in slippery place. Last year sometime, um, I used to, I go to Bristol and I walked up this hill. It wasn't a big, it was a good size hill, but I love to run up there. But when we run up there, when we walked about two, three miles, we have to come down a greater hill. And one day, my nephew and I, we were, we walked, we run up the hill, and uh, we were coming down. And my feet, it, it, it seemed as people deliberately make the hill slippery. They make the hill slippery. So you cannot come down because there's no grip. And I was walking before my nephew. And I fell reverent. And I rolled right down the hill. Glory to God. When I reached the bottom where I run, where I stopped. Glory to God. And I was trying to stop myself. I couldn't stop. The thing is, glory to God. The place was slippery. I was so muddy that I had to knock on a door. My friend, my nephew said to me, Hunks, you can't do that. I said, brother, I can't go in the car like this. And I asked the gentleman, have you got any plastic dustbin liners to give me? I need to put it in my car because I was so muddy. And the man said, he went away, he came back, he said he had no plastic bag, but he gave me a lot of newspapers to put in my car. But when I got down the hill and I looked up back and I saw my nephew behind me, I said, yo, how comes you're like that? He said, I fell. Hallelujah. What the text was saying, number one, they were always exposed to destruction as one that stands or walk in slippery places. The, the places is all that they're, they're, it's always exposed them to failure and to falling. Hallelujah. The, it, the, it is implied that the manner of their destruction coming upon them being represented by their foot sliding. The same is expressed in Psalm 73 where God said, surely you have set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. When a sinner rebel against God, when a church member rebel against God, and they feel they can go on and on and on and on, I want you to know God is not having a problem with them because God knows where they are. They are standing on slippery place. Number two, glory to God. Here I quote Jonathan Edwards. It implies that they were always exposed to sudden unexpected destruction. They were always exposed to sudden and unexpected destruction. As a person who walked in a slippery place is always liable to a fall. He can't see the moment when he will fall, but he will fall because he's on slippery places. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He will fall without warning. He will fall without warning. When I was 
was the last time you repent? When was the last time you repent? When was the last time you cried out before God and let God put a, a, his hand and his finger on the spot of your heart and said, listen, get this right, get this right, get this right. You cannot walk with me unless you're walking right with me. Psalms 73, 18 and 19. This is what it said. Surely, thou didst set them in slippery places. Thou castest them down to destruction. How are they brought into desolation? As in a moment, they are utterly consumed with your terrors. Number three. Another thing implied is that they are liable to fall themselves without, without being thrown down by the hand of another. The very fact that they are in slippery place shows that they can fall any moment without being thrown. I was not pushed that morning when I fell down the hill. It's where I was. If I was at another place, Brother, um, what's your name again, please? Marius, yes. Brother Morris, if I was at another spot where there were rocks and stone, I would not have fallen. I was on slippery ground. When God said don't, and you do, you're on slippery ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. When you're walking on slippery ground, you don't need to be pushed. Your own weight will throw you down. Your own weight, your sin will throw you down. Come on church. Sin is rebellion against God. Sin is knowing you're sinning against God without confessing. You don't care to monkey whether you die or not. I'm going to have my own way. How often time and today we have warned people to flee from the wrath of God but they did not listen. We are commanded to preach whether people are here or from here. In Hebrews 10, 30 and 31. For we know him that has said, Vengeance belong to me. I will recompense, said the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of a hungry God. One of the saddest cases in scripture is that of Samson. He was anointed. He was appointed. But he started to lie. Tell lies. Guessing riddle and paraps not. Anyone know what I'm talking about? We have the saying back home when you sit down you have nothing to do. You say guess me this riddle and paraps not. Out of the heater came forth strong, and out of the strong came forth meat. I'm the only person who know what I'm talking about. And if you don't guess, you can lose your money, you can lose your dumpling, you can lose your piece of pork, you can lose your piece of meat, because you could not guess the riddle. And Samson become, oh glory to God, with the anointing that he had, he was messing up. He didn't know. Oh, when his eyes plucked out and his hair cut off, he lied. He told the liar, the liar, lie, lie, lies, lies, lies. Until another, and then another, and then another. Then she, he told her the truth. And every time the liar said unto him, the fist hand be upon you. Come on, church. Are you hearing me? Glory to God. Are you hearing me? And you need to hear me. You need to hear me. You need to hear me. When you're on slippery slope, you're going down. Be careful. You will fall. And God will not catch you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody might say, preacher, you're preaching on judgment this morning. It doesn't matter what you say. I'm preaching the word of God. Samson lied. He told him strength will go. He went back and he told another lie. You're bound with chains. One day he spilled his heart out. If you cut off my locks. The hand Samson ended up being made sports. 
God said it's an angry, it's a fearful thing. God said, let us therefore, Paul wrote, let us therefore fear. That's the promise he left us. But Paul said it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of God. The living God. Not a dummy God. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, I believe, I forget the verse. He said, knowing the terror of God, I persuade men. You will not like for God to terrorize you. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. I've watched men die, Brother Marius. I've watched them die, and they're ready to meet God. And you, they ask for a water. And you give them the water. And Brother Jim, when you give them the water, they held on to the glass. Even when it's finished. And when they're dead, it's hard to get the bottle glass from their hand. Because that's the last water they're going to get before they get to hell. Hallelujah. When you get to hell, the devil will mock you. I can't tell you, but I never force you. The one that gave it in, he plucked out, he plucked out Samson's eyes. And they made sport of him. Remember Ninja Man when he got saved and he turned back? Everywhere he goes, I am Ninja Man, the tongue back Christian. I'm Ninja Man, the tongue back Christian. No, you, you take that joke. The reason why you look at the text. In Deuteronomy, glory to God, hallelujah, 32, 35, and 36, praise God. God said to me, belong vengeance and recompense. He said, their feet shall slide in due time. Their feet shall slide in due time. Their feet shall slide in due time. Don't worry. It will happen. Proverbs 1, 21. He said, because I call. Your God is calling you. God is calling the church back to repentance. It's so serious when God calls you. When a man repents of his sin, he will run, leave his wife and children. John Bunyan spoke of hallelujah of Christian when he ran from the city of destruction Jenny he went back to his wives and his sons and his daughters he said my dear wife and my children who I love so much he said I, I, I love you tenderly but I cannot stay with you on the same path I will walk the path of righteousness whether you come with me or not then he begged and he pleaded with them he wept over them but they would not come When a man is serious about God, the psalmist said, Though none goes with me, still I'll follow. Though none goes with me, still I'll follow. The reason why, number four, they are not falling already, because it said in due time. Is that the appointed time had not yet come? Deuteronomy, the same passage we have up there. To me belong vengeance and recompense. Their feet shall slide in due time. Ladies and gentlemen, we shack up with our unbeliever and husbands, our men are not husband, boyfriend and girlfriend. We go to nightclubs, we go to nightclub and we come back and we act as if we are saints. We put on a robe, my God, an artificial robe. That's the same our garment Adam and Eve put on. But God had to change the garment and put on them the lamb's clothes. reason why they were not falling. They are not falling now. It's that God appointed time is not yet come. For it is said that when that due time or appointed time come, their feet shall slide. Then they shall be left to fall as they are inclined by their own weight. Not even a mother's prayer can save you when you rebel against God. Not even my mother's prayer. Yesterday, as I was preparing and finishing off this work before I leave to not left to Nottingham, 
I remember God saying to Jeremiah, even if Israel had gone into such a state that even Moses and Samuel prayer could not save them. Jeremiah 15, 1 to 4. Then said the Lord unto me. Hallelujah. Come on now. Though Moses and Samuel stand before me to pray, yet my mind cannot be towards the sleeper. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth. When you see some people rebelling against God, God already gave them up. Hallelujah. Brother Jim, Romans 1, 21. Glory to God. Romans 1, 21. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. He said when they knew God, it's not that they did not know God. They knew him. But they did not glorify him as God. Hallelujah. Neither were they thankful. But became vain in their imagination. Their foolish heart was dumb. Therefore God gave them up. Run with me please. Professing themselves to be wise. They became fools. When I see people come to church and you're preaching and they're taking their texts and now going on, I just look at them wearing bass because I know they're on a slippery road. If they were walking in accordance with God's word, they'd be listening to the word of God. Coming to church don't make you say. They profess themselves to be wise. Therefore, God said, God said, they became fools. Change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to a corruptible man, to birds, four footed beasts, and creeping things. Run with me, please. Run with me, please. Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness. God gave them up to uncleanness. Let them go on. Let them go on in their lust. Let them go on. Go on. Go on. That's what you want. Go on. Go on, that's what you want. Go on. Go on. That's what you want. You have abandoned my word. I will abandon you. God gave them up. He gave them up to unclean things, to lust, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. God gave them up. Brother Damien, there was a chorus. I remember. I my mom used to take me to a place called Sligoville in Spanish town. And uh, she used to run a Sunday school there. And Sharon, one of the songs we used to sing. My mom don't hear well. And it's the worst thing, but even if a person of a brilliant voice, if they're not hearing well, the notes is not right that they're singing. I beg you, hold me, Lord. I beg you, shake me, Lord. Don't let me sleep too late. I want to get there in a due time before the heavens will close. This morning, Lord, I saw my mother. She was running up the heavenly road. I want to get there in a due time before the heavens will close. I beg you, hold me, Lord. I beg you, shake me, Lord. Don't let me sleep too late. I want to get there in a due time before the heavens go close. This morning, Lord, I saw my pastor. He was running up the heavenly road. I want to get there in a due time before the heavens go close. Jeremiah 15, 1-4. What a state an individual can come to. Then the Lord said unto me, Though Moses, Samuel, stand before me. He said, Yet my mind is not towards this people. 
God said, Fear not, he said. Let them go. And if they say unto you, Whither shall we go? You must tell them, I said the Lord, such as for death to death, such as for the sword to the sword, such as for the famine to famine, and such as for captivity to captivity. I will appoint unto that four kinds of the Lord the sword, the sword. I will remove them. Hallelujah. 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 In Psalms 9, verse 16 and 17, hear what it says. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Verse 17, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. Hear what it says. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The wicked shall be turned. In other words, the path that they should be going in is blocked off. No longer can they walk because the wicked shall be turned into hell. God in Deuteronomy, the text in Deuteronomy, he said, God won't hold them up in their slippery places any longer. He will let them go. Then all that very at that very instant. They shall fall into destruction as it stands, as they stand in separate place. Hallelujah. What a thing if God let us go. What a thing if God let us go. What a danger we are in. What danger are we in? Believers, there is nothing to keep wicked and rebellious men at any one moment out of hell but the mere pleasure of God. The reason why they are not destroyed is because God's grace and mercy. It's a sovereign pleasure of God. Why the wicked have not been turned into hell? It's a sovereign pleasure of God why we get a chance. It's not because we are, we are, it's difficult for us to fall. It's because God's mercy. chapter 3 Paul said wherefore as the Holy Ghost said some people will hear this sermon this morning and leave here in rebellion wherefore as the Holy Ghost said today if you hear his voice we no longer come to the altar because the altar is for sinners but may he like coming God said harm not your hearts as in the days of provocation, when Israel provoked me in the temptation in the wilderness, their fathers tempted me, proved me, saw my works forty years. I was grieved, wherefore I was grieved with that generation. They always hear in their hearts, they have not known my ways. And God swear in his wrath, they shall not. You shall not make it. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
in closing, in the book of Jude. What did I say again? The book of Jude. It's only one chapter. Jude. Thank you, Lord. In verse 11, he said, Woe unto them. Woe. This is a word that you find in Revelation oftentimes. Woe. Every time a judgment is about to fall, one angel said there are one woe. One woe is gone, three to come. And you look at those woes that were coming, they were so devastating. God said, Woe unto them. They have gone the way of Cain. They ran greedily after the heaven of Balaam for reward. They perished in the game scene of court. These are three people, people that God overthrew. Cain, God put a mark on him. He said, wherever he go, men must know that he's cursed. Balaam was a preacher and he become greedy. He said, God said, they've gone after the way of the hero of Balaam for reward. My dear, dear brother, you're a businessman and God has blessed you. But whatever you do, God's time is God's time. Jesus took the coin. He said, whose coin is this? They said, Caesar. He said, render to God that which belongs to God and to Caesar. That which belongs to Caesar. Reverend Baptist, whatever we are doing, we got to do it for God. Because it, ultimately it's God must be pleased. He said, they are gone. They run up greedily after the hero of Balaam for reward and perish in the game scene of court. And when Jude talked about this people, he said, there are spots in your feast of charity. Look what he said. There are spots in your feast of charity. They feed themselves without fear. Cloud! They are without water. One of the most mocking things is when, Lord God Almighty, there's a drought on the land and a cloud pass over and it has no water. I have an option. Get rid of our malice. Get rid of our backbiting. Get rid of our dirty tongue. Get rid of it. Jews said there are spots. This is why. And Jude said there are spots, a little spot in your face. You could see them, the spot. Not in microscope. You need to see them. There are spots in your face. They feed themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water. Carried about the winds. Trees whose fruit wither. Fruit wither without fruit. Twice dead. They were born again and they are dead again in trespasses and sin. Blocked up by the roots. One thing you will learn about the seed. You go into the sea alive but it never keep you in it. It will always pull you further. But the moment you're dead, it pushes you out. He said there are raging waves of the sea foaming your own shape. Wandering stars. Said even not even even the seven from Adam prophesy. Mm. They form out verse thirteen raging waves of the sea, forming out their own shame, reserved and black for the blackness of the darkness forever. Verse sixteen: There are murmurs. We have some murmurs in the church. We don't see murmurs as sin. Complainers walking after their own lust. Your mouth speak great swelling words, having man's personal admiration because of advantage. They sit to where they can get advantage. But beloved, remembering the words which are spoken before the, by the apostles 
of the apostles. How that they told you that you should be, you should, that there should be mockers in the last days. When you see them in the church, just a fulfillment of God's word. They walk after their own ungodliness. They have separated themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. But he said, beloved, build yourselves up in the most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. He said, of some of these people must have compassion. It will make a difference. Others, he said, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. They did even the very calmness of the flesh. Everybody knows this the hard way that they are right with God or not. Stand with me. an old song. Reverend, I don't know if you remember it. I hear that welcome voice. Remember that song? That calls me home today. Give me the words, please. I hear that welcome voice. Thank you, Jesus. From Kevin.
Believers, when God is calling you, it's not the pastor. The Holy Ghost is calling you. Today, if you hear his voice, hide not your heart. As in the days of the provocation when your fathers tempted me and proved me, they saw my works. They heard. Therefore, I testify that they shall not enter into my rest. I swore by my wrath. They shall not enter. Open your eye, your mouth and pray. Jesus. Jesus. Those of you that are listening out there. God is calling you. God is calling you. I know there are a lot of great sermons that are being preached. But the Bible says, shall we continue in sin? That grace be about God for him. We should live there in love with it. And in Titus 2 verse 11, Paul wrote for the grace of God. That Hallelujah, appear and has appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness, to live godly and soberly. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, to live godly. Hallelujah, deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We look for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord. Father, we come before you. Thank you for warning us. Thank you for warning me. Thank you for warning your people. Thank you, oh God, because you know where we are. God, you know how much we need to hear your word to run. To run from sin as we run from a fiber. God, hear us this morning. Jesus, strike us on the heart. Strike us, smite us. Let the water of the soldiers pierce the, your side. And the water is gushed out. God Almighty, pierce our heart. Let the pure cardinal sap of our soul be affected right now. Jesus, and there will be a change. Let the word change us. God, if your word can change us, we will not be changed. If we rebel against your word, we will not be changed. That's what you said, Lord, let us free, flee fornication, flee adultery. Jehovah God, lest you overthrow us. Lord, they were in the warning, but they 
they did not take it serious. You say, what should we give in exchange for our souls? Lord, hear us this morning. You said, what did a man give in exchange for his souls? Hear us. Hear us, Lord. Hear us. Hear us. Oh, God. Oh, Psalm said, I hear my Savior calling. Repentant tears are falling. I'm going back to Jesus. And I must go. Lord, hear us. The son said, take me back. Take me back to the place where I first received you. Take me back. Take me back. Take me back. Lord, take me back. Lord, we've got each in ears. Lord, we've got each in ears. Or our hearts become hard, callous, caustic. Lord, we have not changed at your word. This is a lamp under our feet to be turned on. Father, because we have closed our eyes, hear us. Hear us this morning. Hear us. Hear us this morning. Oh! 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 Join us on 
and YouTube and whatever. And uh, it, it may have to be prepared six times and see that. They may just tune in and it registered in your mind. I'm asking you to give that so that seed. God bless you. Praise the Lord, and we're going to um, bring our this service to its close. We will be back in just under an hour. Our next service will be at eleven o'clock. So please um, tune in, or please come to Eighty Mile Stride Road and join us for our eleven o'clock service. And as um, as you leave, can you please um, place your tithes and offering or your um, seed or your special offering in the buckets if you have it today before you leave and we're going to stand as we pronounce the benediction I will pronounce the benediction and you will um, come in, in agreement and now may the saving grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all until Jesus come. Let the people say, Amen. 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 Amen.